Imagine. Imagine yourself in the heart of a dense forest, thick with undergrowth and tall salt trees shooting up into the sky. A forest just like this. You're setting motion sensor camera traps in order to monitor tigers and their behavior in the region. When you hear the sweet melodic chirp of a flycatcher from the canopy above, and you turn your head upwards in order to catch a glimpse of the bird. When suddenly, from the corner of your eye, you see a large grey form rapidly advancing towards you. I raced blindly through the undergrowth. My temples pounding, heart thumping in my mouth. I didn't have to look back. She let out a deep trumpet that reverberated through the forest floor making the ground under my feet quiver and quake like a thunderstorm. I raced. However, within seconds, she was upon me. I threw my laptop bag in an attempt to, to decoy to confuse the elephant. But she was a lot smarter than I anticipated. Bam! She rammed into me and with, in an attempt to gore me and with a deft swing of her trunk, I was propelled through the thorny thicket and landed belly down in the mud. As she kneaded and grinded me into the ground, I could hear the sounds of my bones snapping and getting crushed under her massive feet. I couldn't feel my arm and my leg. And thought to myself that this is the textbook example of the paralysis that we were taught of. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> this is it. This is it, man. I thought to myself, this is it. It's all over. This is how I die. Of course, I'd used other words then, but I can't reproduce them here. <laughs> So, anyway, so you know how all of us here, we dream of winning the lottery and then finally going up to your boss one day and telling him, that's it man, I've quit, I'm out, no more. Well, this accident was that, was that turning point uh, in life for me. That was a life inflection point. As I spent those few months in bed recuperating, which gave me a lot of time for introspection, I realized that I had won my lottery. I knew what I wanted to do in life. And I also learned three things that I believe are very relevant to all of us here in the room today. And I'll share these three things with you. The first is fear. So fear is something that all of us are well acquainted with. right? It is that part of our uh, body's defense mechanism that has its roots in our evolutionary past. The hunter-gatherer that fled the fastest at the sound of leaves rustling, lived to tell the tale. But the one that stopped to ask the question why, or analyze the situation logically, ended up dead in the jaws of a predator. <laughs> However, in today's times, no more are these super fast reflexes the sole key to survival. Rather, the calm questioning thought process and the logical flow of reason proved to be the cutting edge. And when we let fear, this very natural emotion, get the better of us, we actually end up losing control over our being, over the situation. Because then we end up focusing not on the what is, but rather on the what ifs. Not on the task before us, but on the consequences of it not getting done. In the wild, we have this phrase that encapsulates this perfectly, I think. It says, it's better to make the wrong decision than to make no decision at all. Because even a wrong decision will provide you with the information of where your flaws lay and what the right path could be. Whereas no decision will leave you stagnated and no less ignorant. And of course, if you're a chicken, you're meant in a sandwich. <laughs> So being nervous is a critical waste of energy, especially in these trying times. What you ought to do is channelize your energy where on what can be done on not, and not on what could have been done. Right. So, so, however, as I was taken to the hospital and the doctors who were fixing up all my spare parts, they couldn't believe how narrowly I had escaped. I was less than two centimeters away from certain death or paralysis. I, it had missed my spinal cord by a few centimeters, less than two. And coming so close to death has changed its perception in my mind. I do not, uh, it's not as daunting as before. The fragility and impermanence of our lives is visible all around. 
and how abysmally small an amount of control do we actually have on our existence. So, it brings me to what else I, I want to talk about. If the truth of life is that an elephant can strike any time, and we have no control over when this elephant can strike, but what we do need to note is we must recognize this elephant. It is not a pink, cute, cuddly one, but a huge 5,000 kilo heavy, large one, rippling with muscle that is all out to kill you. And if it does succeed, what will you miss the most? Before me, as I spent all that time, you know, figuring out whether I'll ever be back on my feet again, I realized another thing. How how fleeting and ephemeral our life on this planet is. How, how we must do, if we have to do anything in our life, if you want to do anything in your life, it has to be now. Right? So the unpredictability of, of death, the, it's, it's unpredictable. That's one thing that we all know. The strike of death is unpredictable and dis indiscriminatory in its nature. From, you can see this throughout history. Look at the people who seem to have had it all in life. From John Lennon to Tutankhamen. Everyone. For who can tell me with any amount of certainty that they will live tomorrow? It's not happening. In fact, just this morning I was on my way here and I picked up the newspaper. And this was the headline. Can, and can, I think this epitomizes it perfectly. Now, I share this story here with you today because I feel that all of us in our lives have such an elephant. The death of a loved one, failed businesses, relationships, school exam, and so on. The list is endless. And there will always be these factors that are beyond your realm of control. And they will continue to be. But one thing that is and always will be in your control and not in the hands or feet of an, of an elephant is how you, is what you make of it. Right? So I urge you all, find your elephant. Because I don't think that anyone requires an elephant to kick meaning into their lives. Although I won't deny it, it does help a little bit. <laughs> right. So, I'm always a little apprehensive about speaking about this accident because I believe that it perpetuates the incorrect notion about the wild, that it's an unsafe place with all these wild animals all out to get you. You know, in each tree hides a leopard waiting to pounce on you. Behind each boulder is an elephant waiting to maul you. In each shrub is a perfectly camouflaged pit wiper waiting to strike at you. And all of this is absolutely untrue. Nothing could be further from the truth. Yes, of course, one must be aware about the potential dangers just as much as one would be while crossing the road outside. For who can guarantee me with any amount of certainty that I am not going to get run over by a celebrity or his driver when, I'm <laughs> when I cross the road outside here? So, now as I make my way back to the forest to pick up to continue where I left off, I am often asked this question. I'm often asked these two questions actually by my friends, family, colleagues. You know, the first one is, how are you still alive, man? And the other one is, are you not afraid of going back? And to both, I can answer only with these three Sanskrit words told to me by an old forest guard in uh, Pilibhi Tiger Reserve. It says, Prakriti, Rakshati, Rakshata. Nature protects those who protect her. And I now leave you with the one word that I began this talk with. Imagine. Thank you.